So welcome to everyone uh, who's live on this recording um, or is watching the recording later. We are looking today in relation to He Heals the Broken Heart, to the, the changing of the pain, pleasure, um, continuum, um, cycle, the experience of pain and pleasure, looking at it through the eyes of love, particularly through the eyes of God's love and God's love for us and in us. So I'm now going to share the screen. And let's go to the slideshow and Right. Right. The other person I was expecting. Um, did get you got did get in, Denisha. So can you try again? It will work. Lord, can you just make this connection work? So changing the pain, pleasure experience. Come for further healing of your trauma brain. Remember that when we've suffered as children and not been able to make sense of things that should never have happened to us, we we do have damage and we do have to go through the processes <clears throat> of being held by God in new ways, of being held by God to go through the dark night of the soul and seek afresh our faith in him and our trust in him. And there is a greater value in this. It's not just God making you suffer again. Truly, it's not. It's about bringing you to maturity in order that you can stand for Christ, that you can stand as a witness to the love of God. So we're seeking and allowing God to bring us deeper healing and deeper faith as we go through this process. Now, I'm just hoping that I'm going to be able to see if Katerina comes on. Um, so, dear ones, that's you who are here and those who are watching the, the replay. Fact one, in truth, nothing separates us from the love of God, except the destructive thoughts of the world, the flesh, and the devil that separate us from our true being, from God and others. So in fact, nothing separates us, because these thoughts are not real, they're not truth, they're not uh, it, taking us into eternity. So nothing separates us from the love of God, but we get into a state because of damaged brain, because of uh, thinking that comes from elsewhere, that we believe or we think. We've got false um, beliefs, false perspectives that make us feel that we're not loved, but we are. Fact two, God promised he would be with us. Firstly, through his image hidden in us, we are made in the image of God. Hidden deep within us, within us is his image. It's a mystery, <laughs> but our DNA 
is pointing us to God. Through the gift of Christ and his word. Now, everyone here, you know, has known a deep relationship with God, deep faith, and circumstances, life, whatever, have, and me too, took me away from that faith. Because the ways of the world, the thoughts of the world, the evidence, so-called evidence, you know, that I wasn't loved, you know, it's not true. But so the, this is the fact. Through Christ and his word, we are held close to God. And in the church, through the Eucharist, promising to redeem the lost, we have three factors showing us that God has promised to be with us. But we have to open our heart door. We have to receive that truth. And we have to stand against the lies. So we need to be willing to pray, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. We really need to do that. Um, now then, I'm just stopping to share for a minute. Nope. Okay, so go back to the share. And fact three, children need milk to survive, but need to develop and grow to eat the food of adults. We too need to grow to become spiritual children who in faith and trust, totally trust in the work of the Father and live for the life of Christ and the Holy Spirit. So all of these things point us to the fact that God is with us he wants us to live for him. He wants us to become mature in him. And the fact that he's led me to this, this Zoom is emphasizing his desire, his need for people who have suffered, people who have known him, and people who he wants to be purified and sanctified, to stand for him again in a deeper way, a higher way, a purer way, to be witnesses to his love. But we're human, we're here, this is where we are. How do I embrace this work of God when I have this pain within me that stops me seeing the light. So we may be able to see, see the light through one eye, but through the other one, it just seems darkness and despair. Okay, so let's have a look at those, those problems. And we look at the fundamental answer. Christ went to the cross in obedience to the Father, out of love for the Father and willingness to serve the Father's purposes in redeeming the world. And he forgave. Now, those of us who have suffered, there's always been one or more people who have been instrumental in, in causing pain in our lives. And we have to keep on with Christ, being willing to forgive, willing to go the way of the cross, willing 
to do the will of God and forgive. It does happen. I can now say it. I can now live it. We have to be willing to keep trying, to keep saying, Lord, I'm willing to be willing. I don't want to live with bitterness, the anguish. I don't want to live with half-heartedness. And then when we forgive, we can say, into your hands, I commit my spirit. So we don't hang on to our human bitterness, pain, sense of loss, anger, shame, blaming. No. Into your hands, Father, I commit my spirit. Now, Christ gave us the, the, the model. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And it's true. People didn't know what they were doing. They were just following after their own passion or just doing what came naturally. They didn't understand. They didn't plan. They didn't desire our pain. We were just part of what it came on the, on the surface, came as a result of their behavior. So with Christ only are we going to be able to do this. So we have to keep asking him in to the pain and say, Lord, yo, I am willing to be willing to go your way, but I can't do it on my own. And Jesus himself said, man cannot do it, do, do it. But with God, all things are possible. And this is what we're looking for. So Christ became fully man and was always fully divine in union with the Father and the Holy Spirit. We are created as human beings, made in the image of God, and yet called through our faith in Christ to be transformed into the likeness of God. Wow. It is a wow. He wants all our broken humanness to be transformed, to become his likeness through forgiveness, gentleness, purity, um, grace, to become full of his ways of his spirit, to become vessels of the Holy Spirit. I long for that day. And I know I'm further along the line than I was. And you too. Let's just keep persevering. And yet our way to the, to the divinity is to become fully human like Christ. So we're not just aiming for flobbing about in humanity. We want to be like Christ as his, in his humanity, who totally trusted in God the Father in complete humility and obedience. This is what we're aiming for. This is what we desire, because this is where our freedom lies. He only did what the Father told him to do, or what he saw the Father doing. It's awesome to see, sort of think of, you know, Christ and his divinity and humanity. And, welcome, Catherine. Hello. Welcome. Hi. So can, you, can you mute yourself? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. So we're just talking about the fact that Christ is the only way that we're going to be able to overcome and all our baggage. Christ became fully man and was always fully divine in union with the Father and the Holy Spirit. We are created as human beings, made in the image of God and yet called through our faith in Christ to be transformed into the likeness of God. And I just said, wow. And yet our way to the divinity is to become fully human, 
like Christ, who totally trusted in God the Father in complete humility and in obedience. And I believe that this is the, the purpose of the dark night of the soul, so that we become, we have to own our humanity, but keep trusting in God. He only did what the Father told him to do or what he saw the Father doing. God has brought us through to today. Glory to God. But he wants us to embrace our crosses, the difficulties of our lives, and allow his word and life into those dark places to transform them into his likeness. So we release all control to God the Father. But as we release control to God the Father, we gain control over these things through the Holy Spirit. So all bitterness, hatred, condemning, envy, and all those things which divide us from God, ourselves, and others, to be transformed through his love on the cross, and we surrender our human will for revenge to blessing, forgiveness of others, and repentance that we did not turn to God but trusted in worldly or our own understanding. So all of this stuff can be changed as we own it and surrender it to God. So let's look at this pain-pleasure experience. Do you have a battle with your mind, giving a worldly interpretation of the facts? and then grumbling and comparing, making you feel not good enough. I can't do it like they, they can. Look at them, they've had this experience. Look at them, they're far more, for, far more prepared. Look at them, at what they've got. And thus you feel not good enough. Or everything is too hard or too much. I can't do it. Everyone else is loved and provided for, but you aren't. This is what the th sort of thing that our mind does, giving a worldly interpretation of the facts and then grumbling. This is not any use for you. Do you abandon all things that give you life and hope and refuse to spend time with things that feed you in love and faith? I've been guilty of that. Still occasionally I realize that I'm doing that. We have to be aware of these things. And have you become weary of spiritual fighting because there seems no love? I'm often feeling very weary of the spiritual fight. But I need to keep saying, I will not surrender to the powers of darkness. So. What can we do with our baggage that weighs us down? Listen. Are you willing to hear Jesus' invitation? Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Take my yoke on you and learn from me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Seems so easy, doesn't it? Are we willing to trust that? So, let's come and learn to bring your mind from the past doubts to present love. Now, I'm pretty sure that Jason could probably give us some of the references here, but... Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to ask him um, uh, uh, at the moment. Jesus says most of these things, and some of them uh, St. Paul has reported what Christ said to him. He says, I am always with you. God is always with you. But whilst you're up here going and hating yourself and the situation and your life and not wanting this and refusing to accept that and etc. 
How can he? How can you hear him? He says, I am a present help in all your needs. So when you've got a need for anything, ask God. He's going to help you. I've got so many examples. And in in, um, James, it says, if you need wisdom, ask him. And I was once on a pilgrimage with a lot of other, a lot of Swiss people. So everybody was speaking French except me. And we were in um, Jerusalem. And I felt, I suddenly felt very alone and abandoned and whatever. And I asked God for wisdom. And it wasn't an, a head thing that came to me. I found myself singing and praising. And this is a secret always. If you need help, praise. So ask him for help. Ask him for wisdom. I will never leave you or forsake you. So when you're being threatened with, you know, being alone and God's not going to be with you and whatever, say, no, it's not true. Thank you, Lord, that you are always with me. My grace, that means my strength, is sufficient for all your needs. You never need be afraid. If you've been asked to do something, God will give you strength. He, This is something he said to St. Paul. And also, he said, in your weakness is my strength. So this is what God is saying to us too. In your weakness is Christ's strength. <laughs> Don't be afraid of your weakness. The world hates us, hates being weak. We don't have to be afraid. We trust in the Lord. Though your father and mother forget you, I will never forget you. Isn't that wonderful? It's true as well. And if you um, go to Psalm 139, it says, you know, though you rise on the wings of the morning or sink into the depths of the sea, even there I will be with you. So wherever we are, God is with us. The devil doesn't want us to believe that. Your ego doesn't want you to believe that. It wants it wants you to think that you're totally dependent on you know all the good all the things you know and think. No. Let's lean on the Lord. Let's lean on His love. Let's he- lean on His grace. Let's lean on all the, the the power and the wonder of the Holy Spirit. And he said to St. Siloam, when St. Siloam was having difficulty um, worshipping Jesus, he said, keep your mind in hell, but don't despair. And believe me, that has been such, such a godsend for me. Because, you know, when my mind has been in hell, with all the the baggage and the things that happened to me as a, as a child, I thought when I was given Saint Siloan as a guarding saint, and I discovered what he'd been told, I thought, wow, just because all this baggage is there, I don't have to despair about it. God is with me. God will sort this out, and He does, and He did. And he will. So these all all these say, wherever you are, whatever state you are in, God is with you. And I remember once being so weak, I there's no way I could stand up and fight. But I went into the pit with God, and I said, nobody can separate you, separate me from being able to praise you. So I just started praising God in the pit with all this darkness around me, all this defeat and loss and whatever. And I don't, I was lifted out. I don't remember what happened, but I know that I was at peace praising God despite being in, in such weakness uh, and whatever. So nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Just remember that. Oh, 
Sorry. This is where I was. So I put, I said, look these up in a concordance and write them for yourselves on small cards to put around the house. And gradually their truth will seep into your heart and overcome the lies. It's worth looking them up. I may have misrepresented the precise words. And of course, Bibles you know, say things differently, but you will find them. Right. So let's look at the pain pleasure. Can I move that for a minute? Right. Change your belief that you are alone and a victim into acts of unity and love. Now, this is where you need to say yes. So instead of being passive, instead of being a victim, instead of having no power, you take the power of Christ on the cross and you bless and pray for those who hurt you. Or you love your neighbor as yourself and you pray for others who are suffering what you are suffering. So you are changing your powerlessness into love. And when you do that, God is with you. It's powerful. It does work. Your ego and the devil doesn't want you to do that. You have to choose. You have to choose beforehand. Next time that I feel X, Y, Z, you say, I am going to bless and pray for those who hurt me. And I'm going to pray for others who are suffering what I'm suffering. And you're not alone anymore. So in the midst of your pain, without running away from it, but in a sense honoring it in Christ, pray for others so suffering and allow yourself with Christ to suffer the pain in your heart and yet unite yourself with the suffering people of the world as Christ did on the cross. And you will be being part of the salvation of those uh, suffering in the world. We have to believe this. God said it to me after I'd started doing this, and I believe it because I felt something. So then you may have courage and love through Christ to say the words from the cross for yourself and mean it out of love for God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you begin to be able to say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they did. And the more you do this, the more you will long to love God with all you are. And he will enable you to be set free more and more in Christ to live for his purposes. So that you begin to be willingly and consciously loving God with your mind. You may not be able to do it with your heart. You may be on tablets. You may be on you know, things that stop you feeling. But you can still choose to do it with your mind. I am going to say these words and God will bring it to fruition in my heart. I'm choosing to pray for others. I'm choosing to bless others. I'm choosing to pray for those who are also suffering. And he will enable you to be set free more and more in Christ to live for his purposes. But we, you have to choose to do it, dear souls. You have to choose because God gives us free will. He doesn't beat you into submission. He welcomes you into love. Now, hang on a minute, see if I can move this again. Right. Accept the path to doing, not thinking. Thinking which causes prevarication, self-hatred, no decision, wasting days of time, maybe weeks, and self-hatred is not of God. The following will change, the following instructions, as you learn to trust God 
and are willing to risk making mistakes, but go with this pattern to overcome the darkness. I was a perfectionist. I hated the thought of making mistakes and being judged and offending God. Believe me, if you move to start to do something, if you're about to make a mistake, God will lead you and to do it right. But he can't do anything when you are boom. When you are refusing to move. So accept what has been asked of you or what you have had what you have had come into your heart and mind and pray about the first step. If you find yourself in a long complicated thinking process which gives you no peace and no clear start, this is coming from your worldly mind, not God. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Go into your heart to find out what you are being invited to do. And he will give you the first step. And believe me, when I'm told that, uh, invited to do some writing, if I don't listen in my heart, I just, I either start something and it just goes foot, or I can't start at all. But if I listen in my heart, miracles happen. And really, my heart door is opened to see things in a different light. It's beautiful. So go with it. Go with doing what your heart is telling you to do when you've accepted that something needs to be done. Ask the Holy Spirit to set the day and time. It may be now. And ask for the boundary. It may be something that will take a period of time, but one bite at a time, like writing or painting. It may be a phone call, which you've been resisting, so that is complete in itself. But pray for Christ to be with you and guide you in the task. Believe me, you will have peace and grace with you. And don't let your mind, <laughs> when my mind takes over again, boom, 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 and no, 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 and go back into your heart and listen. And it may be that you've done enough for today, that you've started the writing or you've got everything prepared. Listen to this one. I got used to the Lord leading me to prepare the way for a bigger task that needed materials or information. But I discovered the joy and relief of owning this humble step as in God's will. So I learned to say I had to paint a wall or something. Just getting the paint ready or washing the wall or something like that was the first step. Wow, yes. And it gives you grace. It gives you courage. It gives you a practice in obedience. Remember, a will for good is like a muscle. Being obedient to God is like a muscle. You have to do it, and then it gets stronger. And then you can't wait to do it again because you, you have such peace. Your pleasure becomes doing the will of God and, and seeing, yes, goodness, I've overcome that. That's glory to God. And then let's move this out of the way. Facing pain and accepting relaxation, pleasurable activities. Two things I felt bad about, I have needed to simply accept as part of life. If I want to be made whole and love God with all I am, I need to accept both of these things, both pain and pleasure, but without any prolonged sense of guilt, punishment, or shame, or blame. We need to accept what Christ has done for us on the cross. Think of these things when you're tempted to beat yourself up because you feel pain. Invite Jesus and the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. I tend to pray blessings on anything dark, and then when the pain comes, I repent for not having turned to God. 
but no additional thinking or self-condemnation. Christ has done the work. I receive it for the sake of his love being brought alive in me in order that I can love. You don't have to keep beating yourself up, but you do need to invite Christ and the Holy Spirit in. We, In childish ways, we tend to think that when we're feeling pain, we're, we've done something terrible. We may have done, but we may not. It may be that something in the situation is causing the pain rather than you. So ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. And um, this praying blessings on anything in the dark, only six months ago, or a little bit more than that, I was, I'd been told by the Lord that he was going to give me a new heart. So I thanked him and, and gave him permission because he can't do anything unless you give him permission. Really, he can't. And on the way to church, I felt this bitterness, horrible, horrible bitterness, um, pierce my heart. And I'd learned to, whether the enemy was in me or without me, to pray blessings on the enemy, like Jesus said, bless your enemy. So I prayed blessings, and it took about three lots of, praying blessings on this bitterness for it to change into pain. And then when the pain came, I repented for not having turned it to God. I don't know where it originally came from. It doesn't matter. This was God's work. And when I turned to him and repented that I had not given this pain to him, but had tried to deal with it myself. Then there was tremendous healing, and I was melted in the love of God. And that led to a, 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 an awesome act of God through me that day. So don't be afraid of these things. Don't spend your time beating yourself up. Just understand, maybe once a week on a Friday, think about what God, what Christ did, what God allowed, what God enabled Christ to do for us. So that when anything comes up, you can receive that gift and invite Jesus in and believe that what God said, he said, you please me, this is what God the Father said, by believing in what Jesus did. So we need to challenge our belief. I remember I, I used to pray the when I was first in Switzerland, I used to pray the creed. And anything I didn't believe, I'd say, Lord, help thou my unbelief. You can do that. Pray whichever creed you, I mean, I, I, I pray the Orthodox creed, but, you know, Test it. And if you don't believe, don't beat yourself up. Just say, Lord, help thou my unbelief. And allow him to, 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 to cleanse you. So Christ has done the work. I receive it for the sake of his love being brought alive in me in order that I can love. Because that part of me that was full of bitterness couldn't love, couldn't give me. I couldn't surrender my life in, in, as an act of love. And then when I'm called to an activity which is relaxing after a day of work or rest for my body, when I become physically exhausted, I'm reminded that Jesus slept. We're becoming human like him. He slept. And he ate. And with St. Anthony, the monks played. So we need play as well. Don't beat yourself up. If you, I used to play Scrabble. I don't do it now because I got obsessed by it. But I used to play Scrabble. I now um, watch a Christian film or something mainly as my, my relaxation. Or I do some iconography. But we need 
to relax. We can't keep that tension of, you know, standing on the edge of the abyss. There's a, a monastery in England, and the man who used to be the 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 person in charge, the the prior, the abbot, he used to say, when standing on the edge of the abyss gets too much, stand back and go and have a cup of tea. You can't keep it up. God, don't let me sin, don't let me do this. Just remember he loves you. All right, and go and have a cup of tea. Um, so I and you also need that re re relaxation for the mind and body. We need to accept we are human and have needs, as Christ did as a human. And we make mistakes. We're not as Christ. And we'll need to say so and ask for forgiveness out of love for Christ and those we have offended. Believe me, when we can be human with this humility, we will draw many to ourselves, to Christ. When I say ourselves, I mean to Christ, to our life in Christ. So many in the world, they, they don't know how to admit they've made a mistake and ask other people for forgiveness. If we can do that in humility, in Christ, out of love, people will want to know what we're on. <laughs> yeah, we are on Christ. We're on the love of God. So we seek to make reparation for our sin as far as is possible, and we praise God for his mercy and for the work of Christ. Then we praise and give thanks and know that Christ is with us. Sometimes, you know, I, I hear myself, I don't know, being unutterably humble before somebody. And I think, oh, Lord, you are glorious. You are wonderful. I, and, I, and I'm so, so grateful that he gives me grace to keep saying yes. Because the pride in me, the shame in me, the blaming in me, that you know, I've carried for so many years. We don't need it, my lovelies. We really don't need it. So this is a key one. Do what Jesus tells us. Do not be anxious. And I put this flower here, a very simple flower, because Jesus talks about the flat, the lilies of the field. And I think a daisy is a bit like a, a lily of the field. It's so beautiful and so simple. And Jesus says, you know, consider the lilies of the field. They reap, they, they reap not that, no, they, they, they don't work or they don't reap or sow. But they're clothed in the beauty of God. And this is us too. And I want you to know, if you don't know anything about your nervous system, look up the the parasympathetic nervous system and the uh, uh, the parasympathetic and the anyway no it's no good I can't remember I meant to look these up and write them down it's part of my trauma brain we've got a rest and digest nervous system and we've got the flight and fight and when we're anxious we're in flight and fight do you know we can't have good thoughts we can't trust God. We can't do anything when we're in that state. So <laughs> I just love the wisdom of God in everything that Jesus says. In the prayer of St. Paul for the Ephesians, it says, strengthen them by your Holy Spirit in their inner being, that Christ may dwell in their hearts by faith. Now, when you praise, pray, trust, and or call on the name of Jesus, you feel different. There may be a, a Lee, Miss, differently. You feel, anyway. Your nervous system changes to rest and digest. 
and you are not in flight and fight because you're resting in your heart. You can think differently, and this is fundamental. So next time your so-called um, <laughs> rational brain starts you know, getting anxious, just tell them with your real rational brain, no, I am not going to be anxious. I do not need to be anxious. I need to rest in my uh, rest and digest nervous system. And for that, I will praise, pray, and trust. And um, a, a lot of the Psalms say things like, uh, praise is the salvation of the saints. Let's do it. Let's try it. The other day I had, I, I, I did a, uh, a holy experiment and I'd got an area of my brain was really, you know, you're deeply depressed and you'll never get out of this. And my other brain that knows that better says, no, I'm not. No, I'm not doing that. So I started praising. And then that led me into the prayer life that I was you know, intending to do. And when I came back to awareness, all that baggage in my brain, in my it, it, that deep well of um, uh, depression, boom, it had gone. So don't listen to the lies. Listen to the truth. So you, well, I've put it here. If you feel you're in deep depression, if you turn to God and faith and start praising, that old feeling go, goes. Then you can deal with anything God wants you to bring to him. And in all things, praise him for all he has provided and ask him to lead you according to his will and purpose. Your will be done. And when we're being obedient to God, we are receiving that blessing of doing the will of God. This is our pleasure. Our pleasure is doing his will, being obedient to the commandments. The cross has all the wisdom of God in it. So, now, with, this is where we're going to share together. Hang on. We're going to go into breakout rooms and share with one or two others the key problems you have in desiring pleasure or wanting to run away from pain and reclothe your anxieties or other problems, problematic thoughts in the truth of the cross and the redeeming work of Christ. If you're on the recording, pause the video and reflect on the recurring problems you have and how you can reclothe them in the love of God and the cross. So we'll see you when you have finished. And we're going to stop the share. And um, I'm going to stop the, I'm going to pause the recording. Welcome back. Um, I hope you've been able to <clears throat> do what we uh, suggested and focus on something that is a recurring problem. Now here we had, <clears throat> anger was one of the things that was a recurring problem which manifested itself in physical pain as well. Um, and we have to keep working away at that. Keep bringing it to Christ. Because St. Paul says, Ang be angry and do not sin. And our problem is that we've probably sinned with our anger because we've tried to bury it. And that's how it gets locked in our body. But try and face the pain with Christ. Invite the Holy Spirit of truth and say, what is this anger about? How can I face this pain, this anger? How can I, how can this anger be redeemed? And through the cross, 
you can find forgiveness for those who have caused your anger. But you need to work at it and God will help you. But believe me, every time you face it, every time you go through some pain, some weeping, some sense of loss, some uh, agony of the cross, of the pain that you suffered as a child, you will know greater integrity, honestly. In book one of the Trinity, um, I once said, <clears throat> the following morning after the, uh, a day of doing a lot of work, I said, I feel more whole than I have ever felt today. Because all that had, well, I say all, all that had been brought to the light had been integrated into my being. And I felt more whole. And it gets more and more and more whole as we allow Christ to be our all in all. Um, so that anger was one of them. And um, another one was all the holding on to all the anxieties and things. And then realizing that if we unburden them to the foot of the cross or to a priest, even one that is no longer alive, but we know is alive in Christ, that brings release. Because in faith, we've surrendered them. In faith, we've believed in what Christ has done, that he's taken our pains and our losses. So that's another way of dealing with the anger as well. But the, this was more, the more general boom, 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 boom that goes on uh, with, with anxieties. And then another question was, how do we, how do we pray blessings on, um, on, on pain, on, on darkness? And, and I, I said that it's simply, simply a question of, like Jesus said, bless your enemies. So if we've got darkness that appears in us or in somebody else, we bless them as if they're an enemy, but in the name of Jesus. And it will change. It will melt the person or it will melt the, the, the bitterness or whatever it is in you. And then you will find the pain that's underneath it. And Jesus says, a broken and contrite heart I will not despise. But sometimes we have to deal with the um, the, the effects of, of the brokenness, which is the bitterness, and then the repentance, the, the contrite heart, and then he brings healing to the broken heart. So th there are so many facets that you can do, that you can bring healing to when you really believe in the love of God through the cross. So I want you to believe and trust that whatever you have identified and are willing to surrender to the love of God in the cross, you will receive help to complete the work that God has started. If you keep asking for the Holy Spirit and the life of Christ to give you obedience and love, you will receive because you will then be living in obedience to the commandments and will feel that the pleasure of knowing that we do God's will. It's awesome. It's, it's a turnaround of, you know, of pain and pleasure because the pain becomes an indicator of our need for God. It's, it's not it's not a punishment. So if you recognize you would like more help than these short sessions, maybe you'd like to discuss the possibility of a three-month lifter journey. This gives you more time to keep practicing 
reframing your trials and faith problems through life in faith, L-I-F-T, lift, eternally rejoicing, lifter. As you focus over the next three months on, firstly, we will, and now nobody's course is exactly the same because you are all in different places and you need different things. But this is the basic framework. So the first month will be facing and overcoming pain and rebellion through Christ and the lifter framework. So we will look at what your life is, the sorts of things you're doing, and look, find out what it's in. Are you in faith? Are you trusting? Are you praising? Are you being obedient? You know, we look at this. We look at what faith you've got. We look at how trust um, lives out. And we practice eternally rejoicing. Keeping going in obedience to begin with. As you focus over, first of all, on the facing pain and, and facing and overcoming pain and rebellion. And then the second month, your will be done. What is it? What's it? How is it working out in your life? And learning more discernment and implementation of God's love and purpose in your life with Lifter. So we learn more about the the more subtle discernments that we need to to um, to to grow into when we're learning to live with Christ and the Holy Spirit in the love of God the Father. And the third uh, month is on children of God, growing more in the grace of eternally rejoicing as every trial becomes a blessing in knowing more of God and his spirit and love, living for his purpose in and for your life. Lifter becomes a way of life in his love, truth, and joy. And the things that you have found to be the predominant problem become the door to your eternal life in Christ. It's a mystery of love, a mystery of being called by God to share your faith, to share what he has given you, with others who need help, who need to see what somebody is like when they've trusted and believed in what Christ has done, and who have found the joy of praising and loving out of gratitude and joy of being in Christ. So I hope you found this invitation to God's healing of the broken heart through changing the pain-pleasure experience perspective helpful and encouraging. We can be lifted to see through God's love present in us when we do his will. And thus we can choose to invite the Holy Spirit into the depths of our lives to bring new life and healing, not simply to ourselves, but to others too. If you're interested in the three-month lifted journey, direct message me or email on marinax7 at btinternet.com. Good strength. May the Lord bless and keep you. God be with you. I'm going to stop the share. So God bless you all, those who are on the recording, those who are live, and I pray that this has given you uh, a new uh, impetus in your journey. And if you do need um, more, if you would like to know more about the, the Lifter uh, journey, I call it, rather than the program, because although that, that's essentially what we're doing, um, for each one of you, it's going to be slightly different. Um, because you're in a different place. And God treats every single one of us 
individually, although we, that Christ is the key to all of us. So God bless you, my dear ones, and um, do message me if you would like to make a, a booking for a call in relation to the um, to the lifter program, which is three months, and that there is a cost to the lifter program, but it will relate to what you're able to do. So God bless and. Uh, it's not goodbye because you're always in my prayers, all of you. So God bless you. And much love from much love from me. And as my spiritual father used to say to me, I love you, but God loves you much more. And so I love you, but God loves you much, much more. God be with you. Bye-bye. Do you want to say anything before you go? I'm going to stop recording. God bless.